Good morning. So right now, Benny is on a four foot, no bad dog, dog training leash, which I have in my shop on a flat collar. So first thing we have to do is teach you guys and to teach Benny what the leash means, what the pressure actually means. Of course, when we put a dog on, on a flat collar, there's no activation, there's nothing going on there. So we're not gonna train with a flat collar. The flat collar is really great for holding tags and it's really great for transporting from A to B when the dog's on a break or they're going outside to go potty. So the first thing we're gonna start off with just you guys understanding that leash pressure is basically, he sees a distraction, reality he sees people he sees whatever the heck goes on and i apply pressure and if you watch the dog he's actually feeling that pressure right now but the flat collar doesn't matter to him so i'm actively putting pressure on him but the collar has no activation it's just flat it's sitting on his tracheal area which isn't great for any dog which is why there's equipment and there's activation things to teach a dog to do other things without a lot of pressure. My job as a dog trainer, educator, whatever the heck you wanna call me, is to simply teach the dog with as minimal amount of pressure as humanly possible. Now, historically, in a lot of my videos, uh, I call this a calibration or a tune-up. So I teach the dog to understand what leash pressure is through directional changes. But there's one thing that I wanna introduce that I made up actually last night before I started this training was called a pressure path. So he has to understand actually how to turn off the pressure way before I really wanna mark certain behaviors like a heel or a cum. Or oftentimes in the dog training world, it would be called escape training. He has to shut off the pressure through compliance or what I call now an actual pressure path. So I'm creating a pressure path to teach him to go one way and he's got to shut it off. He's got to shut that pressure off by complying and going to that way. So we're going to start off with a basic slip leash, which is exactly how it sounds. It has a little slip here at the end and then I hold on to the other end. Now this is a five foot that I just picked up here at Petco. And so this is an activator. So we talked about activating collars versus flat collars and this activate somehow so if we look at a flat like i showed you guys before there's no activation it's great for holding tags it's great to just grab them if you need to i would suggest everybody have a flat collar on their dog but this is an activator so it actually does something when either the dog puts pressure or the handler puts pressure on the actual collar or leash now when putting the actual slip leash on guys there's going to be a couple different ways to do it but when i'm handling i'm always going to be handling on the left side i'm going to make sure that the leash is actually going towards me i guess to make it easier for you guys is i'm going to show you how not to do it so if he's handling on my left side what I don't want to do is put the leash this way and have the actual rope or the slip leash or collar go against this. So it's kind of resistant there. So what I do and what you're supposed to do is actually put it on this way and then put the actual slip up here. And then usually uh, dog training or I'm sorry, slip leashes have this little clasp to kind of mark where the dog's neck size is, which is really helpful because it keeps it high and tight. One of the other important things is, is making sure that when you're sizing any type of slip or slip leash, you're putting it high and tight right behind the dog's ears to make sure you're not on the dog's trachea to, to cause any damage. He's a strong, powerful young dog. So of course he's going to be interested in pretty much everything out here that uh, exists. So my point is, is we're going to have fun. I have time to develop a great relationship with Mr. Benny, and we're going to make this as fun as possible. So I do have some beef liver treats. I like using beef liver because it's single ingredient stuff. It falls apart really easy. It's easy to break apart. So one of the first things I'm gonna do guys is very simple, very short and sweet. So timing is really important. So pressure, pressure, pressure. Yes, good, good. So if you have a dog that is food motivated like Benny, he's going to probably get the picture really quick that you have food and your leash pressure introduction is gonna be not as good as it should be because he's actually following you around with no problem. So you have to get a little bit of creative. So again, the most important thing is for him to just go with the leash, not necessarily with me. Whatever the leash does, he should be doing. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of pressure backwards like this, guys. Yes, good. So see how his back foot just stepped backwards? So this is really refining what leash pressure should be to a dog on a very microscopic way to really teach the foundational leash pressure without any behavioral cues first. Hiding the food, pressure, back up, yes, good. So what I'm looking for and why I'm paying him is the little step he takes backwards once I apply the pressure to him. So I apply a pressure just straight back like this, not up because the dog's gonna wanna sit if we do that. We apply a little pressure back. The dog takes one step back, yes, and then you pay him. Cause he's having a hard time with the leash pressure back. So he's sitting, he's sitting, he's sitting cause traditionally he probably got pressure at some point and sat and he got paid for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of food motivation and food lure to help with this process. So this will give me the opportunity and leverage to control what his body does because I'm not gonna allow him to sit because his head's gonna be straight forward like this cause he's gonna be after the food. So again, you have to get a little Little creative here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of food here. I'm not gonna give it to him. He's just licking the food out of my hand. Straight back pressure. 
Yes, good. Straight back pressure. Yes, good. So it's important that you don't pull the food this way and put pressure back because obviously it's impossible for him to do what you want. So you almost want to push him back with the food and then you give him a little bit of access to the food. So what I do is I hold the food like this and I don't give him access until he does what I want. So it's a very, very, very easy way to time a dog's reward-based system really quickly. So I take the food out like this and I hold it so he can't get to it and I just push him. Yes, good. Yes, good. Yes, good boy. Pressure, yes, good. Pressure, yes, good. Pressure, yes, good. So it's a little bit of rear end awareness too. He's got to use his back end. Releasing this yes, as in like, I'm using that marker to just let him know like, yes, I'm gonna distribute food to him. It doesn't really matter what you use for marker, but you want to be consistent. It's kind of like clicker training. I don't use clickers because I lose them all the time because that's just how I am. So when he does something I like, I just say yes, just like you would with a clicker system. You teach the dog that when you say yes, there's gonna be a food delivery or reward based system that comes very shortly after or at the same time. I put a little bit of pressure on the back pressure. He's eating the food and I'm helping Helping him go back, he takes two steps back, yes, and I pay him. And then it gives him the opportunity to have the verbal capturing system to understand what I'm doing. Yes, good. So pressure, yes, good. Pressure, yes, good. So he's almost yielding to the pressure. So I'm applying that pressure backwards and he's taking a step back and he's taking a step back. So again, there's so many different ways you can teach a dog leash pressure, but this is one of the ways if you have a little bit of time to really build the foundation really great. Pressure. Yes, good. Pressure. Yes, good. Pressure. Yes, good. So he's learning how to shut the pressure off by moving his body. Back pressure. Yes, good. Two legs back. Yes, good. Very incremental. Absolutely beautiful. Well done, Benny boy. The dog training world and the industry as a dog owner, even as a trainer, can be very conflicting. It can be very confusing. It can be very overwhelming. You get this fear-free, force-free, all this stuff, and it's confusing. On the other side of progression is stress for us and dogs. So throughout this process, again, my job is to eliminate any unnecessary stress or any unnecessary extra physical pressure to the dog, because that means I'm doing my job as a dog trainer, and he's doing his job as an eager young golden retriever learning. So his brain is gonna fire off and go, what the heck do I do? I'm not sure. Oh my gosh, this is stressful. Oh my God, I got paid. Yes, good. Yes, good. Good. Yes, good. Yes, good. Backwards, yes, good. Pressure back, yes. Your timing has to be perfect. So you can even watch his back end. So pressure, yes, yes. Pressure, yes. Pressure, yes! Break, good man, absolutely captured. Really, really nice. As soon as I put my body next to him to give him a little guidance, he moved really well with the leash. So I'm gonna keep doing that and hammer that in. And that's what I love about dog training is, is as soon as, it's kind of like cooking. As soon as you find that one, oh, adding this made it a lot better, you just double down on that. Again, it's the foundation of just teaching him what leash pressure is. So once he understands how to yield with that leash and how to move with that leash and understanding the pressure release and the escape training of it, once he feels that pressure, he's like, oh, I gotta do something. I gotta move with the leash. It's a lot like horsemanship. When you put pressure on the reins and move backwards, the horse is gonna move back pretty much into a reverse until you release the pressure. So he's doing really, really, really well. I'm really happy with this. We're gonna give him a little break. Now, here's the beauty, guys. Turn this way. Now we're in a perfect heel. This is how he should be walking in the future. This is all gonna develop into a nice, loose leash, perfect walk. So he's doing really, really good. And so this is huge for our relationship because what he's gonna wanna do more, you know, obviously because I have motivation and I love using treats and I love using positive reinforcement when teaching new stuff, but you can see what he's doing naturally is he's just hanging out with me and he's very close to me. He's doing really, really well considering all the distractions that's going on. So yes, good, beautiful job, well done.